Alright lads, so version 13.5.0 is finally here, we had maintenance last night, and with that we have a new bunch of stuff to talk about, mainly the return of the colours that we've been waiting for for the last couple months now, and also at the end of the video we're going to be talking about the Keysgate compensation stuff that went down yesterday, which again has the community riled up, so let's just jump straight into it. So firstly, the biggest change I think from this update is the increased link stop potion skill has now been changed for the better, it removed the restriction to only being used in Heritage Zone, so similar to the droplet skill being useful outside of Enriched Dropper Zone for example, now if any quest offers link swap potions as a reward for clearing the quest, you now can actually get extra potions just by bringing a link swap character. So this new change actually makes link swap characters more viable in a sense because you can actually use them outside of, you know, IZ for example. You can actually bring them into IT now and get extra normal potions while farming super potions. And most importantly, you can actually use six link swap characters in epic raids right now when it's available to get guaranteed 30 pots per run. Kind of a crazy change. Now, even though on paper this does sound really, really good, do understand it's not that great as of now. Maybe this is setting up for something in the future, but let's say, for example, you do want to bring your Link Sort character into something like IT, for example, where you're mainly playing that quest to farm super Link Sort potions and not really Link Sort potions. Bringing a Link Sort character, maybe that's only one five, isn't probably going to be the best thing to do. And you're probably better off bringing your, you know, max transcendent character if you do have one. If Link Sort character is your best option, though, then they're not really the worst character to bring there. But personally, if I see anyone bring Carfield Compatriot, into my IT lobby, you're going to get blacklisted. And while I am joking, someone actually did do that to us last week. I don't know what they were doing. We were playing IT and someone decided to join our room with a can't feel Kimpachi. I didn't blacklist them, but my guildmate did, so <laughs> don't do what that guy did. But moving on to Epic Raids, for example, with this new skill change, it actually can be pretty good, because as I mentioned, you can actually bring six Link Swap characters into an Epic Raid lobby, which will therefore guarantee you 30 additional pots per run. Now we have five times Epic Raids, and also, at least for the Awakened Epic Raid, which will be dropping at the end of the month, it does actually range around 17 to like 20 pots per run, so you can actually walk away with 50 Link Swap potions per run by playing Epic Raid, and it actually makes it more beneficial to farm epic raids over IZ, for example, if you can click quick enough. And that's pretty much the problem, right? Because you're bringing a Link Swap character that doesn't have a bonus. Unless they are a bonus, then great, you're getting extra pots. So essentially, the best thing to take away from this is that whenever a Link Swap character does get introduced to the game, and they are a bonus for an Awakened Epic Raid lobby, you're going to be farming a lot of potions. So again, even though it's kind of like a gimmick right now, it can be useful there. You might not see too much usage out of it right now. Maybe in the future, maybe Caliber Senna for something, and it might be even crazy. The next biggest change was something that we were expecting was the adjustment to the character level indicators. So after the whole debacle that happened, you know, two or so months ago, whenever it did happen, with them dropping the ball with the very ugly design, we have finally gone back to our old colors. That being T10 or level 30 Link Slots will get you the red level indicator, and then level 30 Link Slots plus Max Transcendence will get you the purple level indicators. So very nice to see all my red characters return and purple characters. Very happy about that. We do hope in the future they do actually implement a new color to make it worth actually going for T20, but at the very least, they also did keep the Link Slot level indicator being shown, and it will switch between your normal level and your Link Slots if you do decide to keep it on. If you don't like that and you want to revert to the old system that we had a few months ago, then you can just go into the settings and turn it off. Personally, I'm going to leave it on, but let me know in the comments below if you have turned it off or you keep it on like me. Another big change that happened today was the removal of the purchase limit. So normally every pack that you can actually buy has a limit to how much times you can buy it. This new change allows you to just buy the pack that you want non-stop. So this isn't a change that most of you are going to take advantage of. And it's not that great. But for those that are buying the 585 pack non-stop, you know, the big boy whales, at the very least, now they're getting more value because they're getting more links or potions. It's not the best change, but it's definitely better than what we had had before. Personally for me though, I'm going to continue buying obs with Tapjoy because it's the best way to buy orbs with, you know, the lowest amount of money possible. Sub stories have now received the five times soul ticket option. This was something that they mentioned last month. A pretty nice change. Nothing too amazing, but it is definitely good if you ever are in this situation where you need to farm this quest X amount of times to try and get the four star. With this five times soul ticket option, you are now able to get the four star a lot quicker compared to what you have been doing in the past. I have been in the situation where it does actually take up to like an hour of just farming the quest because you only do one ticket at a time. So I very much do appreciate this update. And in the future, when they actually decide to add sub stories that make sense, you know, ones that happen like five or 
so years ago where I can actually get characters that I'm missing, then maybe I will take advantage of this five times sub story feature. One big change that happened this morning too was something that I don't see that many people talk about, but it's a very, very big change for future new players, for example, and that is the erase player data function added. So if you go to the title screen, you can now erase your data. Now, this is big for many reasons because rerolling for the most part has been actually very, very tedious when it comes to Bleach Bros. Souls. And realistically, the best time to reroll is going to be for the anniversary. It's something that we will be getting next month. And I will have an updated reroll guide with this new feature added, but it's actually very simple to reroll now compared to what you have been doing in the past. Because in the past, one of the biggest hurdles for rerolling was that 2.6 gigabyte download. And if you have a very slow download speed, then it can take up to hours just to get one reroll through. So one of the ways to get around this was to root your device, use an emulator, and delete a certain file. And this has basically been the reroll method for the last six years. Six years, and they haven't done anything when it comes to rerolling. So now with this new erase data function, you should be able to hypothetically reroll a lot quicker now compared to the old system. That was a lot complicated. And even when I made the guides demonstrating how to do it, I still had comments from time to time saying it didn't work. It didn't work. So this is a very nice quality life update that not that many people have been asking for. But for those new players that do start the game potentially tomorrow or next month for the global's anniversary, this is going to be a very nice change for them. And it means they can, you know, reroll their account a lot faster and start playing the game. Other than that, though, that was pretty much all the updates that we did get for version 13.5.0. Having said that, though, there are three more things I want to talk about. The first one, bugs. I'm not sure what happened with this update, but this game has now become increasingly buggy. I've seen just by playing the game that I get random freezes, things aren't loading properly. If I go into my album and look at all my characters and swipe down, the characters aren't loading fast enough and it just kind of looks all over the place. It looks buggy. This is kind of a problem. For now, I know Keller will fix in the future, but it does suck that it even is a thing. I'm not sure why they even let the maintenance finish. If this was something that they even noticed, I'm not sure. But hopefully it does get fixed in the future. Hopefully sometime soon, right? Uh, two other changes that happened today was the clearing quest quicker, essentially. So for epic raids, during the boss animation of the boss spawning in, for example, you were able to swipe down your notifications and attack the boss five or so seconds earlier during this animation. And this basically meant you could clear epic raids faster. Kind of cool, right? Unfortunately, with this new change, you can no longer do that. Makes sense, though. It wasn't supposed to be a feature. I understand why k did do it. And it's not that big of a deal, personally, because now we have five times epic raids. So, you know, those five seconds, sure, they do add up over time. But now you're getting six times runs if you have the cons bonanza pass. And you can clear the two-week epic raids in less than two hours. So, personally, not that big of a deal. For co though, I know there are many players out there, some fellow guildmates, where in the co quest screen, when you actually get the quest clear pop-up, you're able to leave the quest 10 seconds earlier and still get the rewards. So you didn't actually ever have to sit through that entire animation to look at your rewards, right? Unless you want to look at them specifically. But unfortunately, with this new change, you aren't able to leave the quest early. You now have to sit there for 10 seconds and then look at the rewards that you do get. For many people that knew about this strategy and always left their quest 10 seconds early to save yourself time when it came to farming, this is something that you now have to just get used to because it was never supposed to be a feature. Again, I understand why Caleb have changed the way they did, but it definitely would have been nice to have this little secret strategy among quote-unquote pro players just to, you know, save yourself a couple seconds when it comes to farming. Uh, personally, for me, this change is whatever. I, it's, I'm a bit indifferent on it. Like, it makes sense, but at the same time, it would have been nice to have it. Uh, now that they fixed it, it's whatever to me personally. But let me know what you like to think about in the console. And that said, that's basically all we have to talk about with version 13.5.0. Now let's talk about Kisuke. Um, of course, yesterday I tried to make a video on it, but unfortunately I ran out of time. My friends were over. I didn't have time to actually make a video. Kisuke compensation was delivered and Caleb have dropped the ball once more because they can't even do that right. And if you know what you're talking about, essentially we found out yesterday that even if you test played the Kisuke, you still didn't get all your orbs back if you left the summon screen. So let's say hypothetically in a situation where you test played the Kisuke, you then went on to spend 2,500 orbs, you left the summon screen to work on your box, you know, sell the characters, maybe level up the Kisuke that you just pulled, and then you went back to summon, and then you spent 2,500 more orbs, you would expect to get 5,000 orbs back. But unfortunately, with the way Caleb have actually handled this situation, you only got the initial orbs that you spent in that first summon session. So if you left the screen, anything after that, you'd have to test play the character again to death or get the orbs. Kind of dumb how that actually worked out. So for even those that are lucky enough to get the orbs, they're still getting robbed out of potential thousands of orbs. So overall, this entire situation is just shitty. This has basically divided the community for those that are okay with it. Now you even have fellow community members Members, like complaining at each other. I've seen discord arguments stuff like that overall This could have been easily avoided if Caleb just didn't refund anyone or just refunded everyone Of course, that's what we want at the end of the day And that's what the official BBS server has been going through for the last 
24 hours of everyone just letting their complaints heard. So if you want to, you know, join in, join the Discord, make sure you let Caleb know your, you know, stand on this current situation because they do actually read it. Even though it feels like they don't read it, Alex has stated multiple times that she does pass on all the feedback that they get. So it really comes down to Caleb if they choose to respond to it. It's not like they don't hear us. They definitely hear us. It just comes down to whether they want to respond to this feedback and hopefully do because, again, it's a really, really negative community right now the last, like, week or so. Rightfully so, though. It's because it's of Caleb, right? And it does suck because we are going into the global anniversary and we even have an end of month on it tomorrow that, you know, some excitement is starting to pick up, especially with the anime coming back. This is definitely not the time to just complain and it really sucks that Caleb are handed in the situation they are. If only they just fixed it the first time. It definitely would have been a lot healthier for the game's lifestyle because I know some people are quitting over this and even those that are getting your orbs, if too many people quit, if people just fed up and stop spending money, then the, the game's going to start dying. And I don't like saying the game's dying, it just brings more negativity. But unfortunately, uh, players aren't happy. I'm not happy too. I'm not going to lie. And hopefully, Calab do something about it because it sucks. It's just a shitty situation overall. But that's it, lads. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know what you like to think about this update in the comments below. I'm going to have another video up later today talking about the end of month prediction because we do have two new characters dropping tomorrow morning. So look forward to that, I guess, if you are summoning. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll see you guys next one. Peace.